Okay, so Be'ezrus Hashem, tonight we're going to be continuing with our series of Shirim entering the Sea of Wisdom based on the Wiki Dilyonos and the Torah of the Gain and the Tzaddik of Yitzchak Maya Morgenstern Shlita. Now, we're going to continue this week in what we spoke about last week as well, because last week we spoke about a Shir that the Rebbe had given from Tavshin Ayin Zayin with regards to the Teres Chacham and the Mahalach of the Teres Chacham, which is that when moving from the general principle into the particulars and then into the particulars of the particulars and uncovering the fact that in each and every particular, no matter how particularized it may be, one can uncover the sum total of all that exists within the general principle as well. So what we've done is we have proliferated and multiplied the opportunities for our encounter with the infinite. Because prior to this quantumization of Kabbalah that the Teres Chacham brings us to, so a person thinks that I could only find HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the world of Atzilus, in the world of Adam Kadmon. I could only experience Keser when I'm by Keser, and I could only experience Chachma when I'm by Chachma, and I could only have Bittl B'Metzias when I'm by Bittl B'Metzias, or Bittl B'Etzem when I'm by Bittl B'Etzem, that everything is what it is and not some other thing. Comes along the Teres Chacham, uncovering the roots of the teachings that were in his Rebbe, the Rashash. And the Rashash was simply uncovering the roots and the teachings that were in his Rebbe, the Ariza, and teaches us that Adarabha, every single point, every single coordinate, every single moment, every single experience and feeling is not some standalone particular, but rather it contains the sum total of all of the entirety of the Seder Heshtashlis, that every single moment, every single encounter, every single sira contains within itself the worlds of Adam Kadma and Atzilas Bri Yitzir and Asiya. It just happens to be, it's that particular set of Akva Abiya in accordance with where it stands in the measure of that particular map of where a person might be. So now, instead of thinking that I can only find Kesser when I'm by Kesser, that I can only find Chachma when I'm by Chachma, I can only find joy when I'm by joy, or I can only find comfort when I'm by comfort, comes along the Torah's Chacham and says, no, even within sadness, there's an aspect of joy. Even within a sense of self, there's an aspect of Bittal, because within each and every entity, within each and every moment and encounter, one, if a person digs deep enough and reaches the core of it, what you come to find is that it's all made up of the same exact material. There's no shift in the quality of reality. Everything is the same quality. Everything is made up of the same matter. The only distinction is going to be the quantity and the expression in which we are capable of grasping it. So when I'm by a darg of Kesar, when I'm in a state of Bittal or Ava or Yira, so then my Ava, my Yira, my Bittal are on a revealed level. But when I find myself thrown away in the lower realms of experience, when I feel devoid and disconnected from any of that content that I so desperately seek, instead of running upwards in a vertical way of trying to escape my smallness and find the greatness that lives outside of the smallness, what the Torah's Chacham and really what the Rebbe is teaching us is that dig into the smallness, dig into the encounter itself, dig into the moment, don't run away to some vertical height that you think is going to free you, but dig down deeper into the depths of the matter and you'll come to find that everything that you need is right in front of you. And that's what gives us the ability to find HaKadosh Baruch Hu quite literally wherever we are in every bracha and every word and every sigh and every glance and every look and every piece of food and every morsel of experience, everything is there, everything is everything. Or as the Lashem Shemeh B'chalayim said, HaKoyl Hu Bakol. So what we're going to be looking at now is something historic. All of it is historic, something historic. The Rebbe has been giving shirim on the Sefer Taras Chacham. Sefer Taras Chacham was written on scraps of paper. The Taras Chacham was so profoundly impoverished that he didn't have the capacity to write on a full piece of paper. You know, it's said that there was a time where the Taras Chacham, the Rashash, and the Chida wanted to bring Mashiach. And they tried and they were interrupted by a black dog of sorts that interrupted their Yehudim. And the Chazonish even pointed to the place in Yeshivat Beit El in the attic. There's a little bit of a descent where they were standing and it's a known place. And as a result of their as a result of their trying to preempt redemption, so to speak, and whatever 
level that means something to us. So each and every one of them was punished. The Rashash was punished with Misa. The Chida was punished with wandering his entire life. And the Taras Chacham was cursed with poverty. So what we see is that the Chida traveled his entire life, which is where we find those diaries from. The Rashash passed away. And the Taras Chacham was so poor that his book couldn't even be published properly because he was writing on scraps of paper. And what the Rebbe points out is that in our generation, what we're seeing is an undoing of all of those klalos, of all of those negative impacts of trying to bring Mashiach too early, which hints towards the fact that everything is being fixed. And in truth, it's going to be time for Mashiach. The Rashash who died has never been more alive. There are more people learning the Torah of the Shash than ever in history. Ashkenazim are learning Torah of Rashash. Everybody's learning Torah of Rashash in particular through the various Mikubalim and specifically through the Tzaddik Rabbi Yitzhak Maya Morgenstern. The Teres Chacham, whose punishment was that he would be impoverished, we see nowadays that there are Mahaduros, Nifla'im. The Sefer Teres Chacham is being republished in new, fancier ways that they came out with a, a version that Avad Shalom put out, a tremendously beautiful example of how beautiful the Sefer Teres Chacham is. And not only that, but the Rebbe's based Medrash under the, the work of Rav Shmuel Shlita is really coming and getting ready to put out a, a commentary on the Torah Shacham, which is going to be on a certain level the end of all commentaries. When these books are published, what it means for us, and I, and however I mean this, what the Rebbe and his Tamidim's writing do for us is that they make it clear that it's harder to not understand than it is to understand. It used to be a problem to understand, and that was enough of a reason for a person not to delve deeply into Panimiya Satara. Nowadays, it is more difficult to not understand than it is to understand, because when a person reads the writings of the Rebbe and his Talmud Rav Shmuel and his Talmud Rav Akiva and all of the Talmidim, it's more difficult to misunderstand because everything is laid out so clearly. And even with the Taras Chacham, so for the past two years or so, what the Rebbe has been doing is each and every week, there's a simon in the Taras Chacham. They go through the pshat of what it means, the, the quantum mathematics of what it means in the writings of the Arizal. And then there's the Darcha Avaida, which is the application of these teachings of the Torah Chacham in line with the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, because this is something that the Rebbe sees as a singular chain in his understanding of Torah, that in order to translate the writings of the Arizal and the Rashash, into the, in order to translate the teachings of the Arizal into the teachings of the Baal Tov, you need the teachings of the Rashash. The Rashash and the Taras Chacham are the bridge that allow us to go from the manual, from the menu of what experience looks like as it's expressed in the writings of Kabbalah to the experience towards partaking of the meal as it's expressed in the writings of the Baal Shem Tov and the students. What the Rashash allows us to do is to see how both of them are really saying the same thing. And so we're going to look at today is the Nakuda in Taras Chacham that the Rebbe was talking about in this week. So this week, just to be makdim, just to give an overview, a general overview without going into any of the details. So basically what the Taras Chacham is pointing out is that we know that in, in Shira Sakalim, in the shattering of the vessels, what happens is that there are 288 sparks that fall down and they enliven those shattered vessels as they exist in their exilic state prior to their redemption and their movement back upwards into the world of Atzilus, which becomes the building of the world of Tikkun. So what falls down in the Shira, what falls down in the trauma are the shattered vessels. So the Kalim fall down. Within the Kalim, there's a Roishem of the ore that was previously there because one of the most important rules when it comes to spirituality is that once spirituality invests itself somewhere, even after it departs, it leaves an irreducible trace and never goes away. And thirdly, there were sparks from the lower levels of the ore that went down to occupy those shattered vessels, Kolzman, so that when we encounter them as human beings in our avoida, we can uncover the sparks and the nitsuts of the light that exists within the shattered vessels, thereby elevating the spark back upwards and building the kalim again to reorient that light into the world of tikkun. That's the Rapach Nitzoitzin. So we know from the Pasuk, the Ruach Alekim Rachepes Alpanei Amayim, Rachepes is the osios of Mes Rapach, that there was a Misa, there was Shvira Sakelim, and the 288 sparks fell down. Now these 288 sparks, these Rapach Nitzoitzin, it's not some historical process. Each and every day has its own Rapach Nitzoitzin that have to be elevated. Each and every encounter has their own Rapach Nitzoitzin that need to be elevated. And our job is the same in every moment, to engage with the brokenness of this world, to elevate it, 
through the man, through the mayim nukvin, through the teshuka and the ahava and the desire to connect back up to shemayim, to allow it to go back up through all of the partsufim, all the way up to avsag da'ak, to the interiority of Adam Kadmain and the chachma and the bina, to give birth to a yichud that draws down more infinite light, to come back down and to reveal a little bit more of a, of a chefsa and a havana in elikus, of understanding a Kaddish Baruch Hu a little bit more. So what the Torah's Chacham is going to point out is that don't think that Rapach only operates on one level. Rapach operates on all levels. And so there's a Rapach on the Darga of the Shem Havaya of Ben, which is going to be the feminine quality where we typically associate the shattering of the vessels with. And there's also going to be a Rapach. There's also going to be an element of something that is shattered on the higher worlds as well, that vis-a-vis the lower worlds, the higher worlds are completely fixed and there's no Rapach. There's no need to clarify or elevate sparks, but vis-a-vis themselves in relationship to that which is above them, so they also have to be fixed in a certain way. So what the Torah's Chacham here is going to be discussing is the relationship between the Rapach on the lowest level and the Rapach Nitzaitzin on the level higher than it. So at first glance, we're dealing with Rapach Nitzaitzin, we're dealing with the Sugya and Shvira, we're dealing with the shattering. But what the Torah's Chacham says is that in relation to the shattering on the lowest level, those 288 sparks that need to be elevated, which represent the brokenness and the trauma and the concealment, you can look at the level of brokenness, trauma and concealment that is one level above, meaning the Rapach Nitzoitzen and the Darga of Ma, as opposed to the Rapach Nitzoitzen on the Darga of Ben, or the Rapach Nitzoitzen on the Darga of the Zachar of masculinity, which is tending to be considered a higher expression than the feminine or the Nukva. And you can look at those level of Rapach, which are still broken, but you can look at them as if they represent the sum total of all of the worlds that a person wants to encounter. That the Rapach that exists a level above me, the brokenness that exists on a level above me in relationship to my level of brokenness, I can look at that brokenness above me and I can find within that brokenness all of the fixedness and all of the wholeness and all of the full expression of all of the worlds. And that's really the question that the Rebbe is trying to be masbi here in the Torah's Chacham. How could it be that if we're talking about Rapach Nitzaitzin, we're talking about shvira, we're talking about something that has specific halachos of brokenness and a need to clarify it. So then how can we be talking about it in a way that it contains everything? It contains an av and a sag, a chachma and a bina, a bitl, and really an or ain't so. So that's the nakuda that this piece in Torah's Chacham is coming to ask. So what the Rebbe is going to set us up for is as follows. So he says on the page earlier that there's a klal gadol in there's a Klal Gadol in Breslov, in the writings of Rabbi Nachman, that when it comes to Avayd Hashem, all that a person gets shown is the step right in front of them. That's it. That's all we have to keep our eyes on. The step right in front of me is all that is going to be revealed to me in my Avayd Hashem. But the Rebbe continues and he says, but sometimes that's not enough because we know that the Vilna Gon writes in his parish on Mishle, that one of the one of the tough kidim, one of the purposes of the Nevi'im was that I would go to a Navi and say, what is my Avoida? What do I need to fix in this world? What do I need to do? What do I need to do? And the Ema Kamelech says that sometimes we can be zoicha to that darga of Nevi'im nowadays if we're zoicha to understand what our Avoida is. But we want to know what it is that we need to do. And sometimes it's not enough to just say, go ahead with the next step in Avoida Sashem. And so what the Rebbe is going to be masbir now is that based on this column of Taras Chacham, that everything is contained in everything, and even the higher level, even though it's considered nishbar and broken, can be considered as infinite and whole in relationship to the lower level, is going to be exactly what we have to understand. And this is what the Rebbe is going to say as follows. And this is on page Pagim. So he says, Baram, nevertheless, so after the Rebbe has explained all of the reasons that even though we don't know our tafkid nowadays, if we have enough kavana, if we daven takadosh baruch enough, if we learn enough, then maybe we can come to understand our kavana, our specific purpose in this world. Nevertheless, the Rebbe says, when all is said and done, we still struggle. The heart still knows its own bitterness that we don't know exactly what our tafkid is. We don't know exactly what needs to be fixed. And all we know is what the step right in front of us is, the next step forward. And the heart of every individual is going to be broken and shattered inside of them. And in the hiddenness of their soul, their soul is going to be crying out. 
that at the end of the day, I don't know the truth of where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to be doing because it's so concealed. And that in truth, when I look in front of me, all I see is confusion and I have no idea what to do. And it's almost as if my legs are entangled. And it's not clear to us which path we're going to be led. And in order to strengthen the broken hearts, in order to give life like dew to the Jewish people, comes along the Taras Chacham in this Nakuda, even if a person only is standing at the lowest level of Shira, the Rapach Nitzaitzin of Ben, the lowest Shira, that place that needs to be fixed, the lowest imaginable level. And all I can see in front of me is one step above me, which is that step is going to be the Rapach Dama, which is going to be the shattering on the level above me, which is still a Shvira. All I see in front of me is another step and entering into another Shvira, and I'm lost and I don't know what to do. Comes along the Torah's Chacham and says that when I find myself in that place, that even though when I look above and I look at the Darga ahead of me, when I look at the place that I need to go to, all I see is Shvira and all I see is brokenness, even though it's on a higher level and there's no Hadar there, there's no glory there, there's no sense of Dveikos and Chasheka. Afal Pikain says there, Abba Imtihiye Yira Salaikim Lenegadenov. If a person has the fear of God in front of their eyes, Yizke Shagam Heima Yairu Lenegadenov, or Mufla Remalib Madregas Absag Da'ak. That if a person learns how to properly look at the level above them, even though it's Shvira, what the Torah's Chacham says is that if you look at it enough, because everything is contained in there, you can reach the level of the Kesar, the Chacham, and the Bina of Adam Kadmon, the highest level imaginable, because everything exists on every level. Lo'y to teach us, the Gambais asher b'zois shenit l'nevu'am even in a time like this where prophecy has been taken away from the prophets, and a person has no idea what the right step is. Nevertheless, a person's heart shouldn't fall inside of them. Because a tiny bit of light pushes away an immense amount of chayshach. Because even in the rapach dema, even in that shattering, which is one step above me, if I dig deep enough, I can uncover the or of tikkun, the or of av and sag the ak. Well, this is the or of chacham and bina, the yichud ila and the yichud tata, the yichud of keser and the yichud of chachma. Everything is there. The zua madrega helyona hasmucha. And this level that is just one step higher than me, that when I look at it, it appears to be nishbar also, and it appears to be an insignificant step in the process of spiritual growth. It's lacking absolutely nothing, and everything can be found there. Because in its particularization, when we open it up, what we come to find is that there exists within it a world of Adam Kadmoin and a world of Atsilas Briyatsir and Asiya. Everything is there. Vim Yudrashena B'cholev. And if we seek it out with the entirety of our heart, and we search it out like it's the riches and the treasures, then we'll come to understand the fear of God and we'll come to understand the knowledge of God, that in this level, even though it's a shvira, even though it's broken, even though it has all of the halachos of brokenness, the nothing is missing. Everything is there. I don't have to run anywhere but the step ahead of me. I don't have to go anywhere but what is right in front of me because everything is right there. Because we know already that every darga, every level is contained of all the levels in the secret of hispalus and hiskashris and the secret of interconnectivity, which means that in the lowest level, I could also uncover the highest level just as in the highest level, I could uncover the lowest level. And even more so, even more so, this is not just a bidyevet, this is exactly how we bring about the higher tikkun. By uncovering the shlemus, the fullness, and the saturation of spirituality that exists in the darga right above us, even though it's a shvira, even though it's a rapach, and we come to understand that everything can be found in there, through that we get to go up to the next level, and the next level, and the next level. 
with satisfaction and yearning at once. Yearning in the sense that I want to go up, 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 but satisfaction in the sense that in the level that I'm at, everything is here. And to uncover the secret paradox that rests in the heart of so much of what the Rebbe is teaching us is bitl and hishtoikukus at once, is to yearn with self-nullification or to be self-nullified with yearning, to feel that it's enough and not enough at the very same moment until we extend ourselves and elevate ourselves to the darga of ad kiram v'nasa v'gavam oid, that pasuk in Yeshaya that tells us that a Kaddish Baruch who is so removed from this world, gavam oid, which is the secret of the raglaim da adam kadmon that are yore rahar hazesim, to be megala, that it's specifically in the lowest worlds that we uncover the highest light of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Then a Kaddish Baruch Hu gives us access to the inner chambers and I can find joy. Amen kenyo ma this the kuda is that wherever I am, the next level in front of me is everything that I need. And so I don't know if the Rebbe is saying this, and, and I could be wrong in this, but it could be that it's an answer to the kasha. Meaning we know that Rabbi Nachman says all the Jew has to do is think about what the next step is. Zat the Vilna Gon, that in truth the Nevi'im were the ones who were going to tell us whatever we had to do. But when we realize what the Torah's Chacham is saying us, is that Mamish, the next level that Rabbi Nachman is saying, the next step ahead of you is exactly what your tafkid is. And so, Mamela, it's not that we've lost what the Grah is telling us. It's not that we no longer know what our tafkid is. Our tafkid is the next step, doing the next right thing, serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu with Shlemus in that moment. And then we come to uncover that no matter where I am, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is here with me. Ah, it's still a shvira. Okay, so that means I have perpetual growth to make. But everything can be seen through these two lenses. That on the one hand, it's broken. On the other hand, if I dig deep enough into it, it's klum chasr mi beisamelech. Nothing is missing. And instead of feeling that I have to escape my current state in order to find the spiritual satisfaction that I'm seeking, I can learn to be satisfied, as the Rebbe said elsewhere this week, that it's not a, it's an Indian of tafasta merubla tafasta, that if a person tries to grab too much and avoid the Hashem, they're naturally going to fall. And a chas v'shalom, a person can say, simply because I can't be perfect in this, I might as well not try anything. And the other Rebbe, Ibcha Mestabra, Zak the Rebbe, that even a little bit contains the whole. And a little bit is as good as anything else because a little bit is all that we can do. We're never going to hop the full picture. And it's only when we accept upon ourselves these slow and steady gradational progresses of movement upwards and realizing it's broken and moving up and broken and up and up, then we'll come to uncover the fact that everything is everything and that in each place that a person has, they can find the sum totality of what they're looking for. And it's not going to make us self-satisfied. It's not going to have us stop and rest on our laurels, God forbid, and say, if everything is present and everywhere, then I don't have to go anywhere. It's a teshuka, it's a desire to reach ad ein sof, to reach the loftiest possible spaces that the human mind is capable of comprehending, but at the same point, being okay with where we are at the same point. So it's not a chuka, it's not a yearning that's born of a pathological need to become better than I am because I'm shameful about how low I am, but it's a chuka that is born out of bitl. It's a chuka that says, I am fine. I've got sparkles here with me everywhere, but it's my job to move weiter. That's what he does. And Mamela, the next step, the next right thing is exactly what my tafkid is. Bezra Sashem.